Today we'll be learning about how to identify attackers against your AWS EC2 instances. So you'll learn about identification of attackers, you'll learn about detecting them, and you are going to be able to use defensive mechanisms and place them into either network access control ways to protect all the subnets within your environment, or using security could be associated with specific instances. So you'll be learning both from the hacker's point of view, how the hackers launch the attacks using Kali Linux, and at the same time, what can you do at the defense end on AWS. So let's go ahead and get started. So right in front of us, we are on the AWS console and one EC2, and you can see right here, we have run particular running instance. So go ahead and click on it. So once you clicked on it, you see the following. This is a public IPv4 address. So this is the address for the internet to be able to communicate with this specific instance. All right, so you can see here, in the same time, we have security group. So you can see right here, we have a security group that allow, for example, secure shell, port 80 and port 443, HTTP and HTTPS, access truly internet or right, from all IP addresses. So 0.0.0.0.0 meant all IP addresses can access into this specific instance to be able to consume the services or to authenticate and authorize into different services over here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over into Colinux. And in Colinux, you can see right here, we have the following. So we're launching a brute force attack against port 22 all right, which is SSH. So you can see directly from here, we're using Hydra. We're specifying over here, right? Hacker Loy as the username, and then we have a list of passwords that we're trying to attempt access into this specific instance. All right, so we have an IP address, we have SSH and dash T4 hit enter on this. So we're launching an attack against the EC2 instance to look up for possible ways to log in into that service to secure shell into the EC2 instance. All right, so here we are launching the attack and you can see the following. All right, so this is an important setup for all services or services you're running across the internet. And sure that you're not using password authentication. All right, because if you enable password authentication, it meant that brute force attacks can happen. So now moving back into our AWS console, what we can do now is go over into CloudWatch so what we have done is that we have installed the CloudWatch agent, all right, which allow us the ability to gather all these logs over into AWS so that we can do our analysis, our analytical checks here, and be able to detect when there are threats against us. So go to the left side over here, all right, you can see over here we got log groups, go ahead and click on it. So once you clicked on it, you can see right here we have var log off dot log. So go ahead and click on it. So once you click on it, you have the following log stream. So go ahead and click on the log stream too. And you can see right here, we got the following. And what you want to do is, we have so much amount of lock events, you're looking out specifically for event message, which is the following, right? Perhaps you got in from an indicator of attack, all right, so you got from a threat intelligence team, from a cybersecurity team, hey, we're seeing Hacker Lloyd trying to go after our system. Let's go check it out. What is he doing? And is he trying to communicate with any of our systems? So go ahead and hit enter on that. And you can see the following right here, okay? We have invalid user hacker loy from this specific IP address. So let me zoom a little more so it's easier for you to see. So you can see right here. So we have invalid user hacker loy from this specific IP address, all right, port 53052. So this is the IP address that we have to take note of because we want to start blocking this specific IP address from further accesses or communication with any of our resources. So you can see right here, okay, we have the following IP address 220, 255, 2158 okay so you can go ahead and do a right click copy this all right or if you're looking out generally for any type of attacks you can enter invalid okay you enter invalid here and you see the following right disconnected from invalid user all right we have another invalid user 123456 another invalid user admin they're all coming in from different ip addresses and you want to begin the process of blocking this type of ip addresses because you're attempting brute force attack against your services so what you can do now you can move over into vpc so go ahead and enter vpc here hit enter on that and what we are looking out for here is to know specifically, all right, which virtual private cloud you have, which subnet is that instance running on. Okay, so we can go into VPC or we can go into EC2. So if I was to click under EC2, I can select under the server that we have right here, and then we can click under networking. You can see right here, right, we have a subnet ID. All right, so here you have subnet 25E8777C. So go ahead and open it up. 
So once you open up the subnet over here, okay, you can see the following. We have the following details. Select onto the subnet and click under network access control list. All right, so this is the place where you determine which are the IP addresses you want to allow, which are the IP addresses you want to block further access from, okay? So now what we can do is you can see right here, okay, we have the following. We have one rule, 100, all traffic. And then finally, we have a star, which denies all other. So what we can do now is to go ahead and edit this network. Okay, so we can click under the network access control list. All right, so once you have it here, select on it and you can click under inbound rules. All right, and click edit inbound rules at the bottom over here, right at the bottom. So once you clicked in over here, you have the following. Okay, so we have several options for us. All right, so here you can see we have the rule number, so we have 100. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and select add new rule, and I'll enter 99, all right, so 99 over here. And we are going to block all traffic from this IP address. So I can select and paste the IP, followed by slash 32. So we're targeting the specific IP address, and right at the end, select deny, click save changes. All right, so network access control list, as you can see there, the purpose of the number is because there's a priority list for it. Okay, so we go through the earliest rule number for the check before we finally go to the later rule numbers. So now that we have added, so let's go into the inbound rules one more time. You can see right here, all right, rule number 99, we are blocking or denying access for this specific IP address over here. So now if I jump back into Kali Linux, okay, so once we're in Kali Linux, I can go ahead and open up, say, any of your favorite browsers. Say, for example, in this case, we enter up Firefox ESR. All right, let's go to google.com and enter my IP address. What? All right, is my IP. Let's hit enter on that. And I can see right here, this is our public IP address, 220-255-2158. So now if I go back over here into the same hacking tool, brute force attack tool that we use with Hydra. So if I go ahead and hit enter on this again, all right, you'll notice something is a little more different because this time around, we're blocking this specific IP address from all communications with any of our instances that are within the subnet that has been associated, okay? So you can see the following, all right? You can see that it's different, all right? So there are no responses. That's why there's a lag in the response from the attacking tool because we're not able to connect over into this specific IP address, which is now being protected from the deny rule that is made available in the network access control list. So you can see right here from the result, error, could not connect to SSH 13229 155 27 port 22. All right, it's not able to connect to this IP address anymore because of the deny rule that we have added against this IP address. So one question you'll be asking yourself now is, what's the difference between network access control list and security groups? So you can see the definition right here, all right? Here you have the following, stateless rule engine, which is for network access control list, and stateful rules engine, which is for security groups. So you can see right here, okay? Inspect each packet in isolation, all right? So the moment it matches, it drops the traffic, say for example, from the deny that you saw earlier. And you can see right here, stateful rule engine, all right, in this case, allow you more complex rules but one thing to take note of one key thing to take note of is that security groups do not allow deny on the other hand network access control lists do have the function for you to run a deny against an ip address so if you have any questions about AWS security feel free to leave a comment below and we'll try our best to answer any of your questions so remember like share subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest AWS security tutorials thank you so much once again for watching